Hello everyone. You are welcome on my YouTube channel Capsule. This is Dr. Vineet Kumar Rai, and this is the trailing video of my previous video on uh, the mechanisms of drug absorption, part two. And in this video, I will tell you about the biopharmaceutical consideration in dosage form design. Now, in this slide, we will see the biopharmaceutical consideration or uh, different biopharmaceutical considerations uh, while designing any dosage form. As you all know that to achieve the desired therapeutic objective, the drug must deliver, uh, must be delivered um, at the absorption site uh, for better absorption. Uh, the rate of uh, the drug absorption and the amount of the, dr uh, the drug absorption uh, should be determined and uh, modified accordingly. So uh, by proper biopharmaceutical uh, designing, uh, the rate and extent of the drug absorption can be modified accordingly so if our planning is better uh, so we can modify the rapid or complete absorption based uh, dosage form to slow and sustain absorption depending upon the desired therapeutic effect now we will see the different sequence of events uh, in the absorption process of drugs from orally administered solid dosage forms here, uh, I'm taking the example of solid doses form that is uh, tablet. And uh, as a first step, the tablet disintegrate into the granules or aggregates. Finally, these aggregates deaggregate into the fine particles and the process is uh, called as uh, the deaggregation process. So here we are seeing that uh, the step three and it happens with a doses form itself uh, at the granule level or can uh, be seen at the fine particle level also so here you can see the third step uh, and it is of major importance and drug directly dissolves and get available for absorption the second case also it is uh, by dissolution uh, the drug is getting available for the absorption and in the third case also this is of major importance and drug gets dissolved and get uh, available for the absorption process so a drug will be in a solution form after dissolution uh, at the absorption site and finally it will be absorbed into the systemic circulation if it is in non any form so non any form uh, of the drug gets absorbed easily uh, into the systemic circulation so if the drug is in ionic form it will not be absorbed easily and uh, for the same the drug should be in ionic form somehow if it is uh, ab absorbed into the systemic circulation then it will not be uh, re uh, not be available uh, at the absorption site again so and uh, we normally see that conversion of non-ionic form to the ionic form is the reversible process. So if the drug is in ionic form, it will not be absorbed. So it has to be converted into the uh, non-ionic form before uh, the transportation to the systemic circulation. And uh, in blood also, the drug gets converted into the ionic form and non-ionic form accordingly. So these are the different sequence of events that happen uh, while the absorption process now the process consists of four steps uh, as we have already discussed that uh, it contains a disintegration process deaggregation process dissolution and absorption process so the absorption from the absorption site you know, of the gastrointestinal membrane to the systemic circulation and the drug may also dissolve before disintegration or deaggregation of the dosage form. So drug must, drug may also dissolve uh, before or uh, after reaching uh, to the absorption site and unless the drug goes into the solution form, it will not be absorbed into the systemic circulation. And that is the main constraint. So here we'll uh, see uh, that in a series of kinetic or uh, rate processes, the rate at which the drug reaches the systemic circulation is determined by the slowest step. Whatever the slowest step in uh, 
all these processes steps that will determine the rate at which the drug is getting available into the systemic circulation and that is called that called as the rate limiting or rate determining step the rate and extent of drug absorption can be influenced by several factors and various factors that influence drug absorption become more important so uh, the factors should be studied and that is why in the next video we will see that different factors that affect the drug absorption and availability so keep watching us thanks for watching